comments. This is a great crowd. Um, so this is like, you know, we just kind of build this in informal discussion. It's very uh, personal. I'm Chris Verone from the Boston Institute for Nonprofit Journalism. Uh, for those who don't know, we kind of uh, took it upon ourselves to form this nonprofit incubator, and we do the kinds of stories that we don't often have the resources to do it. As somebody who's been a reporter in the city for uh, more than 10 years, there's one story that's kind of like uh, one of those holy grail stories. Why are there no liquor licenses in certain parts of Boston? Why does the, the map of where there are restaurants where you can have a drink, why does it look the way that it does? Here's something that's been right in front of us. Everybody knew there was a cap on licenses. And that was the reason that there was no license in a place like this. Everybody also knew that out of nowhere, you can't walk two feet on the, in the waterfront now without hitting a place where you can have probably Or you can pay $18 for a Negroni. Sorry, okay. I've done it. So, so yes. these two stories, as we saw them, they, they, they simply don't make sense to me. And you know, this research, and the, my favorite part of this research here really is the, the deep dive into these licenses. So my question is, now that there are licenses that are getting put out that are supposed to be pegged to certain communities that are not transferable, how much faith do either you or anybody here have that, <laughs> that they're going to stay where they're supposed to be? Well, I feel like, go ahead. Well, I feel like that's where the public need comes in. So there was like one license that was like over in the South End that sat outside of the actual zoning space of a main street district. Like this is a really good example, right? And the main streets, like supporters all came out, folks from the community all came out and supported. There was a ton of letters that went in to support this restaurant receiving a license, and they got a restricted license. So it really goes to show like the effort of community in terms of like that public need. You know, and so I think that there's like a good conversation about that. I wanna to say too that people have <laughs> spoken a lot about, well, you why should these go to certain neighborhoods if people aren't applying for them? And something that um, has been talked about a bit is like we have a little bit of a pipeline problem. Is that this has been like the economic disparity has been so great for so long that there are a lot of people who have been thinking maybe I'd like to open a restaurant, maybe I'd like to do that down the street from my house if I live in Dorchester. <coughs> but I I know that I need three hundred thousand dollars up front for the license, so I'm going to move to Cambridge or. Ayana said it best, we're not going to undo 100 years of hurt in three years. So if we get rid of that cap all the way around, that, that doesn't say that everybody's going to get a license. That doesn't say that, you know, everybody tomorrow needs to be like, cool, liquor license, mine, I'm going to open a bar. You're going to go through the same, same standards, same restrictions. You're just going to have the opportunity to serve should you meet those requirements and have a solid plan and have something to offer your community. And that's, that's the goal.